What's going on, guys? And welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week I, Graham Juice and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network. Today we're talking The Edge and Christian Show, Season 2, Episode 7, entitled Game of Jabrones, as aired this past week on the WWE Network, immediately following Raw. Um, speaking of The Edge and Christian Show, before we get started here, quick cheap plug. I interviewed Christian along with Edge. Edge I talked to two months ago. Christian I talked to this past week for Daily DDT, the same place where my uh, interview with Edge was published back in November talking the Viking show on the History Channel. Well, now Christian is on the History Channel too, hosting Night Fight um, every Wednesday night immediately following Vikings on the History Channel at 10 p.m. Eastern, I believe. We talked this past week to talk about the show's premiere on Wednesday, so it's a great interview. Had an awesome time talking to one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, Jay Christian Riso. The interview is up now in written form and article form on Daily DDT. Um, so getting to the show here, and I mentioned that not because Christian's a part of the Edge and Christian show, but we also talked about the Edge and Christian show at the end of the interview. So for more comments from Christian on the show, check out that interview. So speaking of this episode in particular, um, they kick off the show by mocking like the please retire chants and the beach balls and all this other shit Edge and Christian do that is, um, telling people to just stop, just stop making yourself the center of attention, kind of making a mockery of the fact that fans have been really trying to take the spotlight away, steal the spotlight from the performers and make it all about themselves in recent years. Yeah, it was funny the first few times, but they've been doing it ad nauseum. And I mean, myself included at times, but only when it's justified, I feel. Um, some WWE fans do it far too often, and Edge and Christian are advising them to just stop. They're talking about the beach balls, like from the SummerSlam 2017 Raw Tag Team title match, and the Please Retire chance directed at Big Show. It's gotta just stop. Um, then we get to the real, you know, meat of this edition of the Edge and Christian show, that being Game of Jabrones, obviously a play on Game of Thrones. I've never seen the show. I'm not a Game of Thrones fan. I know the general concept of the show and um, what it's like, and I think they do a great job of paying homage the Game of Thrones on this edition of the Edge and Christian Show. So they have Edge playing Jamie Canister. Can Canaster? Canister? I don't know how you pronounce that, but they take names from characters from the show and they kind of put their own twist on it. Beth Phoenix is also involved here. She goes by the name of Lady Phoenix Canister. Then we have the Tiny One, Hornswoggle, who's obviously a play on um, Peter Dinklage's character. I mean, that's that's an obvious one. So, clearly, Hornswoggle playing Tiny One is Peter Dinklage's character. And then we have, instead of Jon Snow, it's Christian as Al Snow, which I thought was very funny. And then Dreamer is Mankind, but he's not Mankind. He's Manned Kind Of, which I also thought was very funny. Tommy Dreamer makes his way into, like, every episode of the Edge and Christian show. I don't know how, but he does. And then they have each of the houses, which is like, you know, like Gryffindor. If you don't watch Game of Thrones, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But, like, think Harry Potter. If you've seen Harry Potter, they have, like, certain, you know, families and groups separated into houses. If you watch Game of Thrones, then this makes a ton of sense. They're instead divided into title scenes. The U.S. Championship picture scene, and then the Intercontinental Championship picture scene, and then the NXT Championship picture scene, and the Women's Championship picture scene. That's what the houses are divided into. Um, so more on that a little later. I think they go on a quest to find something or someone. Edge and Christian then appear on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's podcast, which doesn't exist. But it's a podcast that's exclusively done to French their, their French audience. Um, the Owens and Zayn French audience, so they do the entire thing in, Fre in French. So they ask Edge and Christian a bunch of questions in French, like, blah, 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 like, how are you doing, whatever. So they respond to everything that Edge and Christian say in French, but what Edge and Christian don't know, because they don't speak French, is that Owens and Zayn are shitting on them the entire time, calling them losers, saying they suck, and that they have a tiny penis, and all this other dumb juvenile shit, which is great, seeing the chemistry that Owens and Zayn have with Edge and Christian. I thought this was hilarious, um, but that was the general gist of this skit here. And then we see Edge sitting down with Randy Orton as like a... I think it's supposed to be a therapy session, so Edge is like the doctor, not playing himself, but playing a doctor. Um, you know, and Orton has, like, he's talking about the IED that he has and the anger management, and Edge just kind of makes fun of him, goes off on him, and says, 
well, you know, you kind of need help and all these other things. And it's a really entertaining bit. I don't remember, like, nuts and bolts of it, but that's really what the, um, again, the general gist of this bit was, was Ed sitting down with Orton as part of a anger management session. It all goes awry. Orton storms out, and then Edge is left with nobody. Um, so then going back to Game of Jabrones here, they make fun of WWE's ECW brand, and uh, they continue along their quest to find whoever or whatever it is. Again, I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I don't know exactly what the purpose uh, or what like the storyline is of Game of Jabrones, but the acting and the performances are entertaining enough to keep me invested. And then we get back to the Chump Stain Challenge, which I believe Edge and Christian are either tied or Edge might be in the lead. So this edition of the Chump Stain Challenge is called the Emoji Exploji which is they give you a bunch of emojis and then you have to guess which superstar that, you know, that series of emojis is describing. And it's really not that difficult. Like, a few of them are pretty fucking easy. Like, The Undertaker, like, an ex, you know, skull and bones in his casket. That's pretty simple. There's some of them I would have never guessed. They could not get the Ric Flair one, the jet flying... Um, you know, um, blah, 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 like the whole Ric Flair catchphrase. It's in a whole series of emojis. Neither of them can get it. So then they have to go to another tiebreaker. And I forgot what the tiebreaker was. Um, I don't remember who had it, who it was about or who it included. Maybe, I know the Natural Disasters was one of them. Um, and I think Edge, or no, Christian got that one wrong. And then Edge won the whole thing. I forgot which one he you know, guessed correctly, um, but he ended up getting the whole thing right, so he won the, he, he ended up getting the whole round right, so he won the whole game of the Chump Stain Challenge. Um, then we see a skit with uh, Vince, quote-unquote, and Pat Patterson, quote-unquote, meeting with Kurt Angle when he first came to WWE. Uh, Vince is Christian, or Christian is Vince, and Edge is Pat Patterson, doing his best Pat Patterson impersonation, and it's just amazing stuff. And Kurt Angle's talking about you know, I don't really want to do this or that. And then he storms off and goes to ECW and he's wearing a wig because he had hair back then. It was just a great bit. Um, and then we get to the final chapter of Game of Jabrones here with um, the whole gang being encountered by the zombie, Braden Walker from ECW circa 2008, the Yeti from WCW, and even Mordecai from fucking um, SmackDown in 2004-2005. Then Christian, in the heat of the battle, in the heat of the moment, lost his man bun. He gets chopped off. He's very sad about that. And then they're soon outnumbered, only to be joined by the um, by the duo of Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, which, of course, this was filmed far before Roman Reigns got sick. But I saw a lot of people happy to see Roman Reigns um, get involved with the show because it's been a while since we got a taste of Roman Reigns here on the Edge and Christian show, or even just in WWE in general. So it was great to see Roman Great to see Seth Rollins. They were clearly having a lot of fun with this. And the whole thing ends when Alexa Bliss, um, who I guess is like the big white witch or the big, like, you know, head official of the whole Game of Jabrones thing. I, I don't know. But she appears and has Ricky Steamboat as like her sidekick or something. And then she says, no more war. No more war. You're pretty much all good. Don't worry about it. So it ends on kind of a weird note, but the whole thing is entertaining. Again, the performances alone, regardless of whether you know what is going on here or not, it's just amazingly well acted in the sense that it's all horribly acted, therefore making it amazing. So the whole Game of Jabrones thing was great. If you watch Game of Thrones, I'm sure you'll like it that much more. Like the Goonies. If you've ever seen the Goonies, you'll like the season premiere of the Edge and Christian show more. If you haven't, you'll probably you'll you'll probably not understand it or get the storyline or get the references. That's me with Game of Jabrones. I've never seen Game of Thrones, so I don't really get it as much, but it's still a great installment of the Edge and Christian show, nonetheless. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Uh, one more time, check out my exclusive interview with former WWE World Heavyweight Champion Christian up now on Daily DDT, talking Night Fight on the History Channel, airing Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We're talking the Edge and Christian show, so perfect segue there. We're talking, you know, a potential return to WWE, working with his friend Adam Edge Copeland, and all these other awesome topics. It was an awesome interview. He could not be any nicer. Christian has been one of my favorites now for like 10 years. 
So to be able to talk to him and interview him, who I've met, I met him three times by this point at various indie events and comic cons and stuff like that. But to be able to interview him was that much cooler. So check out the interview now on Daily DDT. And as for the next edition of WWE Network and Chill, of course, we have a new episode of the Edge and Christian show airing this Monday um, after Raw on the WWE Network. A new Total Bellas this Sunday during Royal Rumble, but I'm sure I'll watch it either Monday morning or late Sunday night, whatever. But also tonight, as they record this on Saturday, we have a new Chronicle with Paige going up on the WWE Network immediately following NXT TakeOver. So that should be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, So my full review will be up of that on here, WWE Network and Chill, probably either on Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned for that, guys. Enjoy Royal Rumble weekend. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.